Assuming that this was not won by stealth, by cheating, um, and I can't entirely rule that out. I'm not saying that there was massive cheating. We certainly know anecdotally that there was cheating all over the place, uh, election judges being thrown out. Uh, we don't have the final totals to see if unusual vote totals uh, existed in Philadelphia, Cuyahoga County, and, and other places. I'm assuming that's not the case. I'm assuming that the conventional wisdom, which is that, uh, number one, Republicans stayed home again. Uh, the vote total for both candidates was below what it was in 2008, and in fact, Obama got, I'm told, fewer votes in 2012 than McCain got right. in 2008, which means that a lot of people dropped out. I'm assuming a lot of people were just completely turned off by the election and that Obama financed by massive manpower and money from the labor unions, especially the public employee unions, especially the teachers' unions. And in some states, I just heard from a correspondent in South Florida that the schools were out uh, on holiday for Election Day so that the teachers could uh, go work the voters, uh, things like that. I mean, we were out-organized, and in part, uh, that was paid for by public employees who... Uh, we're doing voting organization. Uh, but we've got our task cut out for us. We, we can't change this in the short run. We're uh, not in this term of the President Obama going to get fundamental uh, voter integrity reform, which is something we need. So uh, I think we've got to we've got to find some way of, of reaching Hispanics. Uh, who are, as a group, very hardworking people who hope to accumulate something and better themselves. Uh, and the pathologies of uh, dependency and hopelessness that have gripped other elements of the Democratic uh, constituencies uh, have not taken full hold uh, among Hispanics. So that's job one for the GOP, is to increase our vote share among Hispanics. Uh, job two is to... Uh, uh, somehow find a way of hitting back. I think Mitt Romney brought a knife and uh, Barack Obama, as promised, brought a gun in terms of uh, negative campaigning. And uh, Mitt took a lot of body blows and didn't hit back. Uh, he played a gentlemanly game and he wasn't uh, competing against a gentleman. So uh, we've got to learn how to play hardball. Uh, we've got to take back the culture. This is uh, the work of people like you, maybe me in a supporting role, but we've got to get a lot of creative energy out there. We've got to seize the culture. Um, we've got to find ways of uh, overcoming the inertia of the vast education bureaucracy on the public dole uh, and find ways to empower parents more to use homeschooling. I uh, use charter schools and find other ways of undermining the, the public school, school bureaucracy. I think we're going to hit the wall. Frankly, uh, all the planning we want to do now is a little bit of idle chatter because uh, we're going to go broke. California uh, appears to have handled uh, handed the super majorities to the Democrats in the legislature, which means they can pass whatever they want. The Republicans can no longer block tax increases, which require a two-thirds majority. So you can expect that California is going to go bust in the next four years. So one of the big battles is going to be do Texas and Florida and Ohio and a lot of other states want to bail out uh, the lotus eaters in California? And I suspect the answer will be no. So we're going to see uh, some major conflict on that horizon. But what happens when the world stops buying our debt and when the world says we don't want to accept dollars anymore? We're going to accept a market basket or we're going to accept gold or we're going to accept uh, euros or we're going to accept something else, renminbi from uh, China, whatever, uh, instead of dollars uh, in payment for our oil. Uh, when that happens, when the printing press no longer magically uh, is accepted, the dollars off the printing press are no longer mad, uh, accepted by uh, Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, uh, Britain, Germany, Japan, China, uh, then we're going to see the kind of thing that the clowered pivens of the world wanted, mm -hmm. which is to say uh, insufficiency, the dole checks are not going to arrive, uh, the food stamps uh, are not going to be usable. There's, there's going to be a lot of hell to pay. Uh, I don't know exactly when it's going to be. 
could be a year, could be five years. Uh, but uh, this is going to self-correct. You, 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 you can't continue printing uh, money and have it accepted and go on as we have for the last four years. It's, it's not sustainable. So uh, there's, there's going to be a crisis uh, hitting. And, uh, well, federal government's armed itself with a billion rounds of um, uh, high-potency, well, uh, ammunition that's banned by uh, the Geneva Conventions. Uh, it's uh, we're in for some rough times. Uh, I, I I don't have a crystal ball to tell you what's going to happen, but we conservatives have got to get our act together, and we've got to reach the people that uh, we haven't reached. Uh, assuming the integrity of the election, which is uh, you know an assumption you you probably have to make, but can't embrace as a hundred percent kind of proposition. Um, we got to do better, and if the, even if the elections uh, have been corrupted, there's nothing we can do about it uh, mm-hmm. in this election cycle. Not at the national level, maybe at a few state levels, but in the states where uh, Republicans control the legislatures and government governorships, um, we probably uh, those are not swing states. Have you reconciled the fact that you might be a bonsai tree maker, that this is a generational fight, that we may never see the end uh, or, or fruition of our, of our efforts? Uh, Obama picks two SCOTUS, uh, has two SCOTUS picks that may entrench progressivism beyond our lifetimes. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm praying for the health of all the Supreme Court justices. <laughs> they have to live to 120, though. Yeah, well, I, I wish Ruth Bader Ginsburg mm-hmm. complete remission and a long and uh, happy <laughs> life. Um, and uh, we, we, we've just got to survive. Uh, if, if SCOTUS flips, we're in deep doo-doo. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, David Horowitz, what, a couple of decades ago now, a decade and a half anyways, wrote the book Destructive Generation, and that is in fact what has happened. My generation, right. baby boomers, has trashed the heritage that we were given by the founders of the constitutional system and uh, free market, and uh, we're passing on to the next generations a country that's going to be very different. And a workplace, uh, a, 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 an electorate has been engineered through immigration, legal and illegal. Yeah. Do you see hope for, that we can um, we can educate the, the young immigrants to embrace? the founding father's vision of America, or is that done? It's not uh, ask, ask not what the country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. That's been flipped on its ear. Can we flip it back for the young immigrants? I, I, I sure hope so, but, you know, reality, the, 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 the left used to have a, a bumper sticker. You saw it all over Berkeley. Nature bats last. Well, reality bats last. We're going to hit the wall. Right. It's uh, what it, No matter what we strategize, when we hit the wall, things are going to change. And uh, we do know that the arrangement that the Democrats are committed to perpetuating can't last. It won't. Uh, so the only question is how much pain is there going to be? And I think there's going to be a hell of a lot of pain. Well, well, some of the, some of the people I've talked to, uh, they're of the opinion that we should fast track this, make it happen as soon as possible to ha- collapse it as soon as possible. Well, I'm not a Hegelian. Uh, you know, I, I, I understand the way the Hegelians uh, think that, you know, you, if, if you want to, if you aggravate the, the battle between the synthesis, uh, between the thesis and antithesis, you advance to the synthesis, which you guide to the in the direction you want. That's the Hegelian, and traditionally the Marxists are Hegelians. That's mm-hmm. how they work, aggravating uh, crises. That's Cloward. Yeah, Cloward Piven. Exactly. The system collapse. Well, I, I don't. First of all, the collapse is going to be really ugly, and there's going to be a hell of a lot of blame. There's going to be a lot of people looking to blame uh, somebody for this. And, you know, the obvious answer that they'll come up with is the Jews. Come on. We've seen this uh, throughout history, right? Right. Uh, so this is not encouraging to me either. Uh, but we have perhaps have to lay the groundwork so that at least a critical mass of people understand what's really going on, that we're spending ourselves into oblivion and creating obligations that can't be met, and the people that are creating these expectations and obligations are the ones who are leading us uh, to hell. And uh, we got 